Welcome to the fourth installment of our little series about the new additions to the shop. And yeah, as you can see here, I found the mother load of molding planes, which was a really lucky, lucky incident. And I'm so happy to have all these new, new toys to play around with. I mean, of all kinds of profiles and shapes. Um, Oopsie. Uh, some of them have warm holes, so I'm not quite sure if the warm is active in there. So to prevent further damage to the planes, um, I will get something uh, on there to make sure the worms are all dead in there and the planes are not damaged any further. So I removed all the irons from, from the ones over here. And yeah, but they're all in, in nice shape, all have their irons with them. And I can't wait to sharpen them up and play around with them. So to make sure that all the wood worms are dead in, in the old planes that have the worm holes, I will brush on some isopropyl alcohol and let them soak in this bag for 24 hours, 48 hours and after that I can be pretty sure that all the bugs are dead and then I can start to fill in the little holes they left and make the plane sturdy again. So just simply brush it on and all the parts that I can reach. And just to be sure, also get the, the wedge and just slide it in there loosely. And yeah, that's the procedure to kill the woodworm in the planes. Here I got some nice clamps. The parallel clamps are always handy. But the really good deal is for these cunt twist clamps that can clamp things at weird angles. And I, was, I have four of these beauties here in the box, and the price was just unbeatable. So I'm really happy to have those. Then so for setting up the doors, I got these wonderful uh, spreaders, which I used to stabilize the door frame before gluing it in with expanding foam. And since they can be put quite a ways together, I'm sure after setting up all the doors, um, I can keep them and use them to set up cabinets or other boxes where sometimes it's needed to also spread something apart when, when putting it together. So they will come in quite handy in the future. And the only thing I need to do is to replace those little cork feet here at the ends so they will mooring up the wooden pieces of the door frame. So I got here this really cool new toy. It's a cutter for those PVC pipes for, for cables and stuff. The only problem is that the knife is not really sharp anymore. So after a bit of sharpening, I hope it will cut through the pipe and not just squish it like it did here. But that's an easy fix. Otherwise the cutter is working really fine. And we make 
working with the pipe a lot easier in the future and I don't have to cut it all with a saw which will save time. Every now and then it's time for some new toys and this time I was quite lucky and I could convince the wife to get a proper chop saw which is really cool and helpful for cutting all the miters on the edge boards and on the floors and ceilings so I'm hoping to have great fun with that one with a new one so I finally was able to acquire a set of dies for the uh, Stahl Panzerrohrgewinde for the electric conduit stuff where I showed you the taps some episodes ago and yeah the, the um, die holder is missing one of the handles but it's easy to replace it's just normal right hand thread that goes in there and it's a little piece of pipe I can find something and make something up um, in there and it's the complete set it has all the, the cutters all the dies and the appropriate pieces that are as guides on the other end so the pipe has a nice guiding in there in the in the cutter when you're threading on it have you ever heard the story of the guy that had too many drill bits and holes off yeah me neither so i got some more in some various sizes and they were brand spanking new but the price was just right and so some more to add to the collection <laughs> in case I need a hole of a particular size I can go on and, and do that yeah and what would be a MTNC edition without some books that I had just acquired so here we go there's this nice little book. It's about um, casting and molding of steel and other metals and, and all the processes that go within it with it. Like how to set up the mold, what tools are used to cast stuff. And I'm really excited to, to read through that. And the next two books are about something that just caught my eye when flicking through the, the advertisements. And so this one is about the use of a printing press and some we have some new ideas how to use one so maybe there's something in there that I want to try in the future and this other one is about laying out like ID cards or invitations and choosing the right font and so on so yeah hopefully that will, will be handy somewhere in the future i mean if it's not for printed stuff then i guess the same principles also apply for for the use online or designing some signage so yeah just some some more books to read There's just nothing that can beat a really good old-fashioned flea market. So I'm quite lucky that they start opening up again. And I hope they will, do, will continue to do so in the future. And yeah, I went and I got some nice new tools. Got this Stockmeisel that are used to texture stone. The one here is with a, with a nice handle. And the other one is just a hardened steel plate that I can that I have to, to make some sort of a handle when I have to when I want to use it. Got a nice little uh, angle. 
that is always handy if you have to do some layout or figuring things out. Then I got a really cool Allen wrench. That's actually the size you need to um, remove the, the valve from our heaters. So if that ever comes up in the house again, I'm prepared. Then I get a whole bag of brand new aluminium hinges, which are really awesome. So yeah, especially when working in the workshop and, and building cabinets or so, they will be great. And the best part of the, the last flea market was this fine assortment of carving chisels all various sizes and yeah can't wait to sharpen them up and have them ready for the next carving project um, the handles make me think they are made from file and yeah for a few bucks a piece I just couldn't pass them so it's the first time actually filming something inside a new place and inside a new workshop and yeah so far I only was able to set up one of the work workbenches that, uh, that we brought along which isn't that amazing but it will do for now and I set up the workbench that was left by the previous owners where now the miter saw lives for all kind of trim work and the first piece of real furniture that I specifically built is this rack up here which will be over the, the workbench that will get down here and so this is the new home for all the hand planes and I'm really excited to finally get all of my, my plane collection together in one spot and have them accessible when working on the, on the bench and yeah, I'll start putting them in there and see how everything goes. So here are the planes now, the round plane, my wooden plow plane, the Stanley 78, my Stanley 50, here are all the cutters for the plow plane, my little tiny violin maker's plane, all of the molding planes that I acquired. These are the newest ones that aren't yet cleaned up and, and really sharpened. Just pur purchased them during the rebuild. There's some more that need to be cleaned up and, and made ready to work. All the irons are now in the de-rusting bath. Here's my little plug plane and the router plane. And then up top, these little spoke shapes and the cut scraper so far. And yeah, let's see what else might get sorted into this array uh, to, to use the space more efficiently. But so far I feel like a good start on the new workshop here and once 
I have continued to build infrastructure here. For example, on this wall, I'd like to, to put another piece of shelving or place to hang tools. And over here in the back will be a big uh, shelf for, for all kinds of boxes and tools that, that I don't use every day. That should not take up all the bench space available. But yeah, let's see how this goes. 